A warm welcome to VTU e Sectiona program, VTU e Learning Center. This video, in this we are going to see about the module number 5 of Artificial Neural Network, the continuation of the previous module, applications of the self-organizing maps. As you come across about the last video about applications of the self-organizing map, which is going to be useful to identify the vector quantization and which is going to be very much useful for the neural photonic typewriter and control of robotic arms. As well, I have come across over there about the radar based classifications, brain modeling, feature mapping of the language data by creating a cluster semantic categories. So, in this video, we are going to continue about the simulation performances. What and all the things are going to be get present over there on the software on the web. The simulation was performed with the particular SOFM MATLAB, the toolbox available from the particular website which we are going to see in about www.cis.hut.fi slash project slash some toolbox, SOM toolbox, which is going to be a modified version of the program which is going to be present for the SOM. Demo 2 was used to gen generate these figures which have been shown in this simulations. Okay. So, let me see about the iris pattern classifications with the help of that SOM demo 2 which have been simulated over here. So, iris pattern classification. Let us revisit the iris data. Recall that the iris data set compromise comprises the 150 patterns of feature measurements which made on the three species of iris flaws. So, iris sesots, iris versicolo and iris vignica. The four feature measures are the patal length, patal width, spatal length and spatal width. There are 50 patents for each of these three classes. These are going to be get plotted in this figure, the six possible projections of the four dimensional future vectors. This helps which gives an idea of the range of values of each feature. Also, notice that the tendency of this data scatters to cluster naturally around a nominal value. So, the histogram in the margin shall show how all the four features are going to be get clustered. So, if you are going to see about this the different six snapshots which is going to be get present about the spatal L, the particular value of spatal W and spatal L which have been shown over here. So, we will present about this pattern classification. The iris data set to an Cohen map and then label the map after it has been trained. Since the SOFM algorithm which uses the Ediclean distance, the class of individual variables plays an important role in determining what the final map will look like. If the range of the values of one variable is much greater than that of the other variable, then the data are usually normalized. Then the variable will be probably dominant the or dominate the organization of this SOFM. So, therefore, the components of this data are usually normalized prior to presentation so that each variable has unity variance which is going to be having an unity variance. After training the map assuming an 8 cross 8 grid of neurons the map is going to be get labeled. The best matching of this neurons of this map is going to be found for each pattern of the data set so that this neuron is one of with the minimum distance between the weight vector and the pattern under considerations. So, the species label corresponding to this pattern is going to be assigned to the neuron. In other words, we can say that one 
uh, the each neuron is going to be finally assigned to a label that corresponds to the species whose patterns are going to be elected a nominal response with the highest frequency. So this figure shows how the species partition the map into three distinct regions, three distinct regions. So this is going to be one region and the blank space are one more region and these are going to be another region. One for iris, cestos, another for iris, Veriscolo and the third for Iris Vignica. The blank nodes never win the competition for any of the three spices patterns. So, if you are going to see about that, this is going to be one region and this is going to be an another region and this is going to be another region. Such a way it is going to be get splitted into three different regions. So here the blank spaces which are never win the competition for any of these three species patterns. Okay. So this figure shows about the neurons in the SOFM labeled after presentation of this iris data set, self organized feature maps labeled after presentation of this iris data set. Let me see about the histograms. Note that the scale of this x axis in each of the histogram is going to be chosen differently to clearly dissipate the distributions. So, which is going to be taken as spatel L, spatel length. Spatel W, spatel width, spatel length, spatel L, spatel length, and spatel W, spatel width. So this is a way it's going to be showing the histograms of this particular iris data. We'll discuss about the neural photonic typewriter method. Automated speech recognition represents a difficult problem due to the high degree of variable. Uh, variability of acoustic speech signals which corresponds to this photonics or phenomenons. So that have to be mapped to a same linguistic units. The, photic, the, the phonetic units are going to be called as phonemius. The phenomenous units which are going to be connected to the same linguistic units. So these are linguistic abstractions that do not directly correspond to the distinct acoustic segments. They have varying lengths, they have they may overlap partially and their acoustic appearance varies corresponding to their context as well as from the speaker to speaker. So the primary objective of the speech recognition is to transcribe the carefully spoken understands into phon uh, phenonym sequence and to transform them into orthogonally correct written text. So the Cohen's neural photonic type, uh, this typewriter represents a classic example of an automated speech recognition that uses one of the two neural module, the self-organized feature mapping or learning vector quantization, SOFM or LVQ. Either of this method is going to get used to classify the speech segments into phonic, uh, phonomic classes which is going to be uh, synchronized with time. So the results are decoded into phonomic strings using a hidden Markov model HMMS. A statistical methodology for representing the recognition stochastic time series. So the artificial neural network approaches difference from the conventional HMM methodology by using an artificial neural network as a component to emphasize the discrimination between phenomenons. whereas the aim of this HMM is going to be representations. So if you are going to see about that the neural photonic uh, phonotic typewriter was designed to work with the Finnish language that has 21 
phonemes which corresponds almostly unique with grammars which is going to be called as written text symbols so the equipment was developed by helkins university of technology it is built around a co processor board that has the capacity to perform the classification of short time speech spectra by the self organization map self organizing map as well as to apply the symbolic post processing to correct for the colorative errors okay some kind of co articulation errors will be get present over there so it was able to transcribe unlimited finish and japanese dictations into a text at a later accuracy exceeding 92% so the neural model applied in this design is going to be a special supervised self organized map in the input vector comprises a 15 component short time spectrum spectrum vectors pre processing of this speech signal to generate this vector involves a number of steps this includes recording on a noise cancelling microphones analog to digital conversions fast fourier transforms low pass filtering and then grouping the spectral or spectral channels into a 15 components real valued pattern vectors so the final step of pre processing involves subtraction of this average form all components and normalization of this resulting vector to constant length so each input vector is going to be stacked to a class using an output vector this is a binary vector with in uh, with its components assigned to 0 or 1 to indicate different phonic classes during recognition the x is not considered the problem which is going to be faced in discrimination is that the distribution of the spectra of different classes overlaps here uh, it is here the uh, neural network can effectively define the class separating the boundaries that generalize well so that the original finished language has only 21 pheno, uh, phonics so which the three unvoiced uh, plosives are grouped into one case resulting with the 19 components class vectors of x so the concatenated 34 dimensional vectors are then used as inputs for this self organized mapping notice that since the x is going to be the same as the vector of the same class but different for different classes the cluster of this vector x along with the class is going to be enhanced leading to improve a class separation so the weight vector then also tends to approximate to the density of the concatenated x not to the signal x so this learning is going to be supervised in the sense that the classification of each x in the training set is known as supervised in the sense that classification of each x in the training set is going to be known so the corresponding x value must be used during the training and during recognition of a unknown x only this x signal part is going to be compared with the corresponding part of the weight vector so that in the original version of the neural uh, photic typewriter the class vectors were not applied and 8 cross 12 dimensional planar network underwent self organization to create a two dimensional topographic map of speech elements so this figure shows the network architecture how the neurons are going to be indicated by circles and the label the indication the pho uh, phonemics of for which they give the best response although most neurons gives a unique answer some response to two phonics for example the discriminant of x or p or t is not unique for this transient spectra of this phenomenon are analyzed by a auxiliary map a natural speech signal is going to be processed to uh, generate a 15 channel uh, sp a spectral vector which is presented as an input to the neural network so which is going to get portrayed in the next figure 
a neuron responds to different spectral inputs. So, this figure portrays response of neurons to different phonics, each shade blocks corresponding to a neuron of this particular picture. The white indicates a maximum response. The map was calibrated with 50 samples of each test phonics. The white indicates. Understand? So, which is going to be a maximum response. A coherent point out of the uh, striking results is that the neuron in the planar finds get sentized uh, uh, to spectra of different phonics even when class information is going to be not employed. This is because input spectra clusters around phonics. The map requires calibration using a spectra of a known phonemes. Here, the problem is going to get faced in the segmentation of the map response into a standard phonics transcriptions. Samples are taken every 9.83 milliseconds and are labeled by the map. This labels samples are going to be called as quasi phonics, quasi phonics. Since a true problem, uh, since a true phonics lasts for some 40 to 400 microseconds, if m out of n successive quasi phonics were the same, they are correspond to a single phonics. So let me see about the sequence of this self-organized mapping response above when the Finnish word humpile was uttered. Each arrowhead represents a spectral, each arrowhead represents a spectral sample. Since phonemes are influenced by neighboring phonemes an effect called co-articulation. Additionally, difficulties arises in this discrimination. Discrimination. So that the Cohen used a context sensitive stochastic grammar which typically comprises 15,000 to 20,000 production rules, the dynamically expanding context DEC algorithm automatically corrects this errors. The same stage also transforms the phoneme sequence into a text using the described configuration, which is going to be a letter accuracies of around 92 to 97 percent can be get obtained. So, let me see the last topic of module number 5, growing neural gas. In many applications, there is a little or no information that about the input distributions or the size of the data set. In such cases, it is difficult to determine a prior the number of neurons to use in the self-organizing feature maps or for that matter even in classical vector quantization. So, this particular topic describes an incremental clustering algorithm called growing natural gas GNG which makes no assumptions on the number of neurons used by the network. So, growing natural gas is an unsupervised incremental clustering algorithm that can perform both dimensionality reduction while discovering a topological map on an input data distribution. Henceforth, we refer to this algorithm as GNG. So, the GNG incrementally creates a network on nodes that quantize an input space described by a distribution of points in the particular range, which might be drawn from an unknown uh, probability density function. So, that the position vector of this GNG nodes in the input space acts as codebook vector for a data clusters. As mentioned already, the GNG can also be used to discover the structures that closely reflects the topology of the input distribution. So, an appealing aspects of this GNG is that it is adaptive in the sense that even if the input distortion changes slowly over time. So, GNG nodes will gradually migrate so as to cover the new dimensions. Since we can say that the GNG incrementally creates a network of nodes that quantize an input space described by the distribution of points and the position vector of this GNG node in this input space acts as a codebook vector for the data clusters in R. 
since GNG is going to be closely related to this particular triangulation, we stop for a moment to understand what is this. Recall the clustering attempts to find the structure in data to locate groups of similar data items. So, by finding these groups of data items that share similar structural properties, so the vector quantization quantizes an n-dimensional set of input vector into a limited set of n-dimensional codebook vectors. So, the codebook vector that quantizes the input vector space. Understand? So, let me see about this Voronik diagram. Once a set of codebook vectors has been determined by the pattern space, which can be quantized using this Voronik diagram. This figure illustrates for five codebook vectors. In this diagram, for each codebook vector, every point in the bounding region around the node is going to be closer to the top of the node that to any of the other nodes. So, the triangulation is a close, closely related graph structure where the codebook vector with a common boundary are going to be connected by an edge. So, this figure portrays the triangulation corresponding to the boundaries of this five code vectors of this particular figure. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 which is going to form a triangularity. So, this is going to be called as the triangles which is going to get formulated over there. So, this is a boundary which is going to get formulated over there. The generation of this boundaries, the solid line and the triangulation graph with the dashed lines for this five codebook vectors which have been filtered with circles, filled with circles, which scattered randomly in this 0, 1 and 0, 1 unit square. So, this is nothing but the MATLAB simulated output command which have been used to generate this figure. Let me see about the competitive heavens learning and the practical general law. The competitive heaven learning. The GNN algorithm was the natural gas algorithm which we briefly described. And this core natural gas and growing natural gas both are going to be used in the competitive heaven learning. CHL. The competitive Hebbin learning assumes that a number of nodes are scattered in and then incrementally insert the topology connections between them based on the evaluation of the input data drawn from the data distribution. So, the competitive Hebbin learning works corresponding to the principle for each input vector x inserts a topological edge between the two nodes closest to the top of the x of k which are identified using a edulian distance measure. Such a way it is going to be doing its process. Let us see about that scattered data of 10 points. The graph that results from this application of this procedure is going to be subgraph of this triangulation which is going to be called as induced triangulation. This figure shows a data scatter of 10 points which groups into two clusters, six points in one cluster and four points in other. One, two, three, four, five, six in one cluster and one, two, three, four in another cluster. Look at this cluster as represented regions in this input space where the P of x is going to be greater than zero. Then the induced triangulation represents a graph where two nodes are going to be connected only if the common border of their polygons lies on least partially in a region where p of x is going to be greater than 0. This is why we see the graph split into two subgraphs, each one representing a region of the input space where p of x is greater than 0 and which is going to be showed that the induced triangulation optimally preserves the topology in the general sense. So, the scattered the data scattered of 10 points which groups into two clusters of 6 points and 4 points. The induced triangulation represents two subgraphs where two nodes are connected only 
the two nodes are going to be get connected only. If the common border of this polygonal lines at least partially in a region where p of x is going to be greater than 0. For nodes in the graph to have a connection that dissipates the topology of this input, they should lie in the region of this input space where p of x is going to be greater than 0. In order to ensure this, one can use any vector quantization techniques so that we introduce a natural gas for vector quantization. So, each node in this network is going to be associated with the position vector which is a triangular parameter or a trainable parameter. So, which is going to be a basic update principle that is going to be get followed with for each input vector it has to adopt the position vector for them with the m closest nodes in the graph. So, with m decreasing from a large initial to a small final value. Let me discuss about the philosophy. Cohen's self-organizing feature map philosophy. Initially, a large number of nodes will adopt their position vectors towards the present inputs. As m decreases, finally a stage comes when only the closest node update its position vector. Only one can see the similarity of this within the Cohen self-organizing feature mapping philosophy. So, the learning rate also follows a similar schedule with the total number of iterations fixed in advance. So, that what happen? The natural gas and CHL can be applied concurrently. Competitive heaven learning can be applied concurrently. And a method for removing this absolute edges is introduced based on the concept of aging of edges. So, edges starts out with an age of 0 and the age increments conditionally with iterations. So, edge whose age exceeds a maximum limit or removed from the graph. Lastly, observe that the NG and CHL does not influence each other in any way. Adoption in natural gas is based on the distance measure and not on topology. And the CHL competitive heaven learning only adds or deletes the topology connections in the network without affecting the position vector of this nodes. So, the primary issue of this natural gas is the requirement that the number of nodes in the graph have been specified in advance. This can become difficult in practical applications and different number of nodes are going to be required for different levels of complexity of the data. Where the growing gas, growing natural gas overcomes this problem. So, let me see about the operational summary of this GNG algorithm. The GNG starts out always with only two nodes in a graph. Nodes are consider, uh, considered to be a neighbors if they are connected by an edge. The information on this neighbor is going to be maintained throughout the run of algorithm. As in the natural gas as well as the competitive heaven learning is an essential component of this GNG algorithm and is used to direct the adoption of position vector of the nodes and also the insertion of the new nodes. We need to note that the GNG only uses parameters that are constrained in time. Further, it is not necessary to decide on the number of nodes to use a prior since nodes are added incrementally during the execution. So, insertion of a new node stops when a user defined performance criteria is going to be met or if a specified maximum network size has been reached. Let me see about the various steps followed in this GNG as summarized over here. Scatter two nodes A and B at random positions X A and X B in the RN. Generate an input X K its iterations K in accordance with this P of X. Find the nearest node N1 and second nearest node N2 using the Edulian distance. 
at the square distance between the input x and the nearest node n1 in the input space to a node local error variable with this expression and move n1 and its direct topology neighbors n1 n towards x with learning rate of w and n respectively of this distance of each node to x. Increment with the expression this and we need to increment the age of all edges connected to the node n1 and connects n1 and n2 by an edge if an edge exists set the edge of this edge to 0 if such an edge does not exist then create it we need to create that one and set it to edge to 0 we have to set the edge to 0 and we need to remove the edges with an edge larger than that of the a max if this results is going to be in nodes having no edges connected then we need to remove that one. Then if the number of input vectors generated so as for in an integer multiples of a parameter and insert a new node into this network, how to insert this new node? We need to follow some steps for that. Identify the node P with the maximum accumulated error, then identify node Q which is going to be the neighborhood of this P with the largest accumulated error and insert a new node R half away between P and Q with the expression. Then insert a edge connecting the new node R with the nodes P and Q and remove the original edge which is going to be lying between P and Q. Then decrease the error of P and Q by the factor of A initializing the local error variable of this R to a new value of the error variable of this particular p. Later we need to decrease all the node errors variably by a factor of fi. Then if a stopping criteria example if it is going to be a network size or some parameter or some uh, performance measures is not yet fulfilled then we need to return to step 1. What is the step 1? Again we need to scatter two nodes A and B at random positions of XA and XB. Then we have to generate an input. Then we need to find the fine nearest node. Then we have to add the square distance. So, so on it has to be get continued. So in the GNN algorithm, the position adoption set the steps results in a general movement of all the nodes towards the area in the input space where P of X is going to be greater than 0. So, an insertion of this edge between the nearest and second nearest node generates an edge of the induced triangulation with respect to the present position of all nodes in the network. So, the edge based removal of this edge update the induced triangulation in the event of the movement of points. So, the introduction of the new node into this node, the network helps reduce the error at nodes that lies in the region of the input space where the mapping from the data to node leads to large errors. An operational summary of this GNG gives which is going to encapsulate the algorithm in the formal terms, a careful reading which is which will be helpful for us to prepare uh, to write a MATLAB code. So let me see about the MATLAB code for this particular algorithm. So essentially the variables has to be get noted over here the center, topo, age, error with respect to the store the position vectors of this nodes, topological connections between the nodes, age of the edges between the nodes and local error stored at the nodes after picking a data point randomly from the distribution. So the Ediclean distance is going to be computed to all nodes in the network and stored in that particular distance. The first and second winners are identified and errors of the winner is going to be updated. Next, the position vectors of the winning node and its neighborhoods are going to be adapted to move towards the input vector D. So the age variables of this winning or the winner and its neighbors are going to be updated. Next, we have to select the winner 1, winner 2 and are connected by a edge. If they do not have a connection edge and its edge is going to be set to 0, 
the old edges that have aged beyond the maximum age are going to be removed from the network. In addition, any node having no animating edges are also going to be get removed from the network. So that every lambda iterations, a new node is going to be added into the network up to a number of maximum nodes. Then the node with the maximum error is going to be identified as winner 1 and winner 2. And its neighbor with the maximum errors is going to be taken as winner 2. The number of nodes, the num node is going to be incremented by 1 and the new node is going to be set half away between the winner 1 and winner 2. So that the errors are going to be reduced and the new node error is going to be set to that of the winner 1. So that the topological edge in the topo are also updated along with their ages. Okay. So, shall we see about this particular thing and it is going to reduce all the errors also over there. This is a MATLAB code which have been given for this particular algorithm. We are going to take the iterations, selecting the pattern at random, copying the data into that one and we are going to compute the distance of the data point to each node over here and we are going to make the sorting the distance and updating the errors for the winner, winner 1 and winner 2. And we are going to select about this particular updations of this node positions, then node positions are going to be get updated with the equation and we are going to take the node positions. Later we are going to take the aging, we are going to take the age of the existing connections winner 1 and winner 2 and connect the first and second node winners. Then removing the old ages, converting matrix of vectors to remove the old ages the edges are going to get removed over there and we are going to take the edge with the topo vector and we are going to remove the unconnected nodes and the unconnected nodes are going to be removed off and which is going to reduce the number of nodes over here. Once it is going to get reduced a new node is going to get added, the new node is going to get positioned in such a way, so which is going to identify the errors also over there and expand this topo matrix to include the newly inserted node the newly inserted node topo is equal to topo 0 of new node minus 1 comma 1 of 1 and removing the connections between the winner 1 and 2 as I said we have to remove the connections with between 1 and 2 that is going to be done over here. Then connects in the new node we are going to connect the new nodes over there expand the edge matrix then we are going to do the plotting of this particular code. So the code is going to get plotted at this end. Okay, such a way we are going to do this particular data. So once we are going to get plot, the simulation result is going to be given like this. So this is going to be a data set which is going to be get randomly uniformly distributed data points which are going to be in two disjoints of square regions. If you are going to see about that one, it looks like a square region, two different square regions. Then the simulation results which are going to get produced over there with for the different iterations. A quick set of simulations based on this MATLAB code of the previous sections are going to be presented to cement or intuitions. So this GNG induced triangulation describing the topology of the input data distributions. For this simulation, a data set of randomly uniformly distributed data points are going to be taken and which are going to be confined to two disjoint, disjoint squares regions as shown in this figure. Understand and which shows the snapshot of this algorithm in action at various iteration points of the algorithm run. The simulation parameters were chosen as follows which is going to be taken as maximum age is going to be 20 sorry 50 and maximum nodes are going to be 20, lambda is going to be 600 and E w value is going to be 0 0.05, E n value is going to be 0 0.0006, alpha is equal to 0.5 and beta is going to be 0 0.0005. Starting out those two nodes, the network gradually expands iteration elapses. Every 600 iterations, a new node is going to be added to the network. Dead nodes, nothing but nodes with no edges are going to be automatically removed from the network. So that the distribution is going to be disjoint and the nodes and edges gets added to the network to gradually cover the area of the 
input space where p of x is going to be greater than 0. At 10,000 iterations, the topological being to emerge at 20,000 iterations, the induced triangulation is going to be clear. So, before closing this particular thing, we quickly sum up a few essential of this GNG algorithm. An important feature of this GNG algorithm is that it is not necessarily to decide on the number of nodes to use in advance. Also, it employs the parameters that are constant across iterations. In this AVQ or the Cohen map, learning rates requires adjustments with elapsing iterations in GNG. This is flexibility in the insertion of new nodes which can continue until some user define the performance criteria are met or alternately if a maximum network size has been reached. So, the GNG is thus an attractive candidate for a problem where we know little or nothing about the input data distributions or where deciding on the network size and our adjustments of the learning rates and other parameters are going to be get difficult. So, the GNG can handle stationary or even slowly moving distributions. Applying this GNG to a rapidly changing distributions with no repetition is of no use since the network nodes will rapidly or will never able to settle down or get enough time to adjust their position spectras and the topological connections. So, the GNG can also be extended to handle non-linear movements of nodes. Such a way it is going to be get useful and it is going to be get connected over there. So, as I said before closing this module, essential things about this GNG algorithm which have been come across, we have seen about this one. So, this particular simulation outcome which have been shown over there, after the 10 iterations, if you are going to see about that, the squares which is going to get formulated over here, you can identify the difference over there. After the 5000 iterations which is going to be connected between that, we are going to get a connection. After 10,000 iterations, the connections are going to be get interlinked. And after 2000 iterations, which is going to provide a triangle, induced triangles, which is going to be providing an induced triangles, is going to be so clear over there. So, an important feature of this GNG is that it is not necessary to decide on the number of nodes in advance. Also, it employs the parameter that are constant across the iterations. So, that a learning rate requires an adjustment with elapsing the iteration in the GNG. So, that we have a flexibility in the insertion of a new node which can continue until some user defines the performance or performance criteria. And sometimes alternatively, which can maximize the network size, which can be get reached. So, that the attractive candidate for problems, where we know a little or nothing about the input data distribution. So, this GNG is going to be get handle the stationary or even slowly moving distributions. So, by applying this GNG to a rapidly changing distribution with no repetitions, the nodes will never be able to settle down or get enough time to adjust their positions. Understand? So, with this I am going to summarize this module. In a linear neuron that employs the Hebbin learning, the weight vector magnitude grows without bounds and approximates the maximal agent direction. The problem of this unbounded magnitude can be solved with the help of Oja's rule as we already we come across in this previous videos. An extension of this Oja's rule to be the multiplayer linear neuron network which comes in the form of Sanger rule which helps exact extract the first M principal components of the correlation matrix of the particular input vector scheme. And 
We have come across with two theorems of adoption which summarizes the capabilities of linear neuron operations in a stochastic framework. When neuron learns with the equations and their weight vectors asymptotically approximates the mean of the input vector string. So, when neurons learn this equation, the weights vector asymptotically approximates the maximal agent directions also. Then we have come across with a competitive learning, the competitive learning law which paves the way for vector quantization and eventually clustering and classifications. The vector quantization seeks to find a small representative set of vector for a given data set that clusters about some centroids. So, both supervised and unsupervised variants of this algorithm have been proposed over there. And we come across with the vector quantization which seeks returning to the neighbor uh, neurobiological metaphor, Mexican hat network employed a complex web of connectivity which is going to be involving a short range extractory feedback and the long range low level excitations. This network provides a substract for a soft competition when group level activities or clustering activities taken place as opposed to carry or to case of the binary choice network. So, this allows the learning algorithm to update the weight vector to a cluster for the neuron rather than a single winner. Then the Cohen network employs a soft competition to the to update the weights with a planar network of this neuron with the objective of this topological mapping with the high dimensional data to a lower dimensions. So, neurons in the network undergo a normal competitions based on the distance metrics and weight updates takes place in the cluster of the neurons in the neighborhood of this winner. So, both the radius of this uh, neighborhood and the training data are learning rate reduces the iteration elapses. Then we are moving on to this network which have been goes through a short ordering phase followed by a rather long convergence phase during this latter space. The learning rate and neighborhood radius are going to be maintained constant. So, the last topic which have been come across in this module 5 is going to be a growing natural gas GNG is an unsupervised incremental clustering algorithm that can be performed both dimensionally reduction while discovering a topological map of a data distribution. Then the GNG incrementally creates a network of nodes that quantize an input space described by a distribution of points in R, which might be drawn from an unknown probabilistic density function P of x and an appeal aspects of this GNG is that it is an adaptive in sense that even if the input distribution changes only slow over time. So, GNG node will gradually migrates so as to cover the new dimensions. Hope that this videos are going to be useful for you to understand about the artificial neural network of module 3, 4, 5. So, with this I am going to wind up my session. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you.